Coach's Corner is presented by Roanoke Valley Harley-Davidson. Stop by their store on Peters Creek Road for new and used motorcycles, service and repair, along with Harley-Davidson clothing and collectibles. Hello and welcome in to another episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Mitch Stewart and this morning I'm joined by Rail Yard Dogs head coach Dan Rivner. Dan, thanks for joining me. Thanks Mitch. Let's take a look back at last weekend to start off this episode. You go get three out of four points on the road against first place Fayetteville. You've had some success against the Marksmen so far early on in the season in that series. What were some of your takeaways from Friday and Saturday night in that weekend against Fayetteville? Um, yeah, I think uh, consistently this year we've kind of elevated our game against Fayetteville. You know, their arrival from, from many years past over the last few years. And, and uh, we found a way to kind of get the better edge of them early. But, uh, you know, if we're looking at the game, honestly, like there were moments that they, uh, they took over. They got a lot of talent over there. Uh, getting Rodebush back on, on Saturday was huge. He, he made some huge saves for us. I mean, same thing with uh, Klazer on, on Friday night. Goalies both played well. Um, you know, we, uh, we struggled a little bit when that pressure ramped up, uh, you know, first period they came out with a bang, um, and then third period when they had their press, uh, you know, we struggled to handle that pressure, so something that we need to make sure that we're, uh, we're focused and we're uh, ready for going forward here. Struggled a little bit on Friday night early on in that game, but it felt like in the third period you guys kind of came out at a totally different level as far as your energy. Was there kind of something that happened during that second intermission, or do you think it was just kind of the group coming together and finding their own confidence in that game and that comeback attempt? Yeah, I don't think there's so much that. Like I said, I, I think the first period of the weekend, um, they were amped up, and obviously we had, uh, you know, gotten the better results in the three previous meetings, so obviously they were fired up, and I don't think we were really ready for their first period push. Um, needed, needed some time to wake up, which is another thing, you know, we got to make sure that going forward here we're playing 60 minutes. Um, obviously, the second and third, we, uh, we, we played much better. The third, we had that... Uh, uh, whatever it was, four or five minutes of, uh, of offensive breakout. And, uh, um, you know, we, we're a team, we've got a lot of talent, we got a lot of speed. we got guys that, uh, when they're playing confident, get their head up, uh, can make some plays. And, and we've seen those offensive explosions uh, in, in games over the course of the first uh, quarter here. So one of those offensive explosions kind of happened with the same exact group on Friday night. It was that forward line of Don Marston, Kavik, Solon McDade, and Alex DiCarlo. And in behind them, you had Brendan Pepe and Jonathan Bartuccio Pereira playing really well together. What was it kind of about that group of five that seemed to kind of catch fire on Friday night, and how do you kind of push that group to kind of keep replicating that as the season goes along? Um, yeah, I, so that group, obviously, yeah, they, they, they uh, were feeling the puck that night, feeling each other, and, and found each other all over the place. But Dom's been, Dom's been unbelievable all year long, and, and he's kind of like a motor for us in, in every situation. I mean, I don't know who wouldn't want to play with him on the line right now, actually, and watch him go to work. But... Uh, you know, they got their heads up, we uh, found a little bit of confidence, and then, uh, you know, I think uh, Favel got up and went to shell it in a little bit, and maybe, uh, maybe hope to just hang on to it, and, and uh, we pushed the pace, and they did, they did a great job. Uh, it's, it's promising to see that it's not always, um, you know, the, the, that top line of Ford, Stubbs, and, and Jansen that are kind of pushing the pace. Now it's a matter of finding that consistency and everybody kind of finding that, uh, finding that touch at the right time together. Defensively, the penalty kill has been really strong for you guys here lately. Only one goal allowed in your last 20 penalty kill opportunities. When you kind of try to break down going down a man and, and how you can play well in that situation, what are some of the factors to having that success on the penalty kill? Well, even the, uh, the one we did give up, the four on three, which was an overtime winner, um, you know, what it comes down to is easily enough first is buy-in. Guys just wanting to block shots. And then it's uh, being able to think when, there, when there's pressure, um, you know, even that uh, overtime um, uh, PK goal that we did give up, it was just a lot, loss of focus. It was a loss of uh, where we were supposed to be and not staying in our lanes. And, you know, when there's pressure and then there's a rebound or the puck or you're in there for 25 seconds, and then that's when uh, it becomes harder and harder to maintain that, that focus on your job out there. And our guys over the last uh, 20 reps have, have done a great job in buying in, blocking shots, being heavy with their sticks, and then, you know, being able to think through all that pressure and make sure they're maintaining their, their job out there and staying in those lanes. Only one game this weekend with a schedule change heading in to this game against the Birmingham Bulls. It'll be the first time that Birmingham has been here since the President's Cup final last spring. We all know that they've got a really high octane offense behind them, second place in the league. What's going to be important for you all as far as trying to get the job done on Saturday night and get the two points against Birmingham? Uh, yeah, like no real excuses for us. You know, now that uh, we don't have a Friday game, we're sitting here at home. They're playing at home in Birmingham on Friday. Then they got to travel here. Um, but they're going to be fired up, you know, uh, after after last year's uh, finals. I'm sure that's still in a lot of their minds. Um, but they're a very, very good team, and, and we have to recognize that coming in. So 
um, you know, we're going to make sure that tomorrow, uh, even though we don't play a game, that we're getting our we're getting our physicality, and you know, we're going to make sure we get some battles in, and we're feeling body so that going into uh, Saturday, we're not uh, slow up the start. We're going to need a full 60-minute effort to uh, to overcome overcome a good uh, Birmingham team. Well, we'll have best of luck to all this weekend against the Bulls. Thanks, Mitch. That's going to do it for this episode of Coach's Corner. Roanoke hosting Birmingham on Saturday night here at Berglund Center. The Teddy Bear Toss game here against the Bulls. Sponsored by Gillespie All-State Agencies. We hope to see you there. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a great rest of your week.